unspent transaction object, right? Um, that is locked up. This is like locked up. So another way of saying this is like Bitcoin that's unspent, right? Okay. Shut up. <laughs> 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 Object oriented programming never made it to Bitcoin. No, okay, all right. Um, uh, Bitcoin that's unspent, uh, but that uh, requires two parties to sign, right? So how do we do that? How do we say, okay, this is Bitcoin, it can be spent, but in order to spend it, you need two people to sign off on it. How do we make that happen? Multi-sig. Multi-sig. And it has to be a multi-sig that two people sign off, so it's two of two multi-sig, right? Okay. So a lightning channel, we're talking about lightning channels, a lightning channel is a, um, really, it's a UTXO that is locked up with a, locked up with a two of two. Can you, can you give me that? That's okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, good. Great. Perfect. Wow. This, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, How do we make that like work, right? So what does that involve? Like we want to open a channel, that means we're two people, like, you know, lightning nodes, whatever, um, are gonna like make, they're going to like make a two of two output, right? Somehow, right? So what does that mean? What does it take to make a two of two output? Does anyone know what the, uh, what the, um, the script is for a two of two ops? Check the thing. No. Yeah, here it is. Does this. anyone recognize this? Is this? What is this? Does anyone know what this is? Who's in my class? Where's Lear? Lear, what is this? This is a script. It's a script. Bitcoin script. It's a Bitcoin script, right? What does a Bitcoin script do? It helps you um, lock up Bitcoins. And lots of Bitcoins up, right? So we didn't cover this in class. We didn't have time this week. Liren was in my class earlier this week, my base 58 transaction class. We talked about scripts. So this is this is how you write contracts or like how you write programs in Bitcoin is you write Bitcoin scripts, right? So this is the this is the script definition for opening a lightning channel, right? So the reason we're going through this is so we know what we need to open a channel, right? Like we need we need some information. Two parties are gonna to come together. So uh, Lightning is a protocol, right? What is protocol design? Protocol is figuring out what two people need to communicate to accomplish a task, right? Together, to some extent. Um, and most protocols are like two people talking. You can get multi-party ones, those are complicated. Lightning is all written, you have two people having a conversation. So we need to figure out what they need to tell each other so that we can make it UTXO on chain. Like our task that we want to do is we want to make it to, to multi-sig, right? And we want to end up with one of these at the end of this process. We're gonna have a conversation. And we need to know what we need to talk about in our conversation to make this happen, right? Okay, great. So in order to know what we should talk about, well we need to know what we're putting information into, right? So this is the this is the script that we're gonna put on chain. And you'll notice there's two things we're missing. We're missing a pub key one and a pub key two. Right? Does everyone know what this means? Okay, so the op two, so uh, is anyone familiar with how op check multi sig works? Wow, okay. One little hand over there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay so should we, should we walk through check multi sig? How long do we have? Is this, this is going to be way off topic. We're not going to do it. It's fine. You guys will have to like come to base 58 class or something and we'll <laughs> walk through it. Okay. But the whole point is that in order to make the script, there's two items, two pieces of information we need. We need one pub key and we need two pub keys. So like the general idea behind a check multi-sig is that um, when you have a check multi-sig, um, you're going to need a signature that matches each of the pub keys, right? <coughs> And there's two pub keys in here. There's pub key one and pub key two, one from each participant. So they're going to give you a pub key. You're going to put it into this like contract. Then you're going to lock the money up on chain, and it can't move anywhere unless both of these pub keys sign off on any like new thing. Okay, this is sort of like a side 
construction, but it's kind of interesting. So what we need is we need, um, if we're building this, we need, we need to get a pub key from each party, right? Um, cool. So there's another thing, right? So everyone knows that when you have a transaction, right, you have a list of inputs and then you have a list of outputs, right? And one of these list of outputs needs to be our two of two multi-sync, right? Anyone feel like I might be losing people? So in a transaction, you have inputs, you have outputs, and one of them needs to be this two of two multi-sync, right? So in the old days, old days, uh, V1, so anyone who's using like V1 channel opens on Lightning. The way that this works is that um, someone says, so you have two nodes, you have node one, and then on the other side of the channel you have node two, right? And they're talking to each other, so node one is going to send a message all the way over to node two, right? So the first node is going to say, hey, I want to open a channel. And part of that is going to be like, I have a pub key here, pub key one, right? And it's going to send that over to node two, right? And then node 2 is going to get that message, and what is node 2 going to say in response? <coughs> They're going to, oh, it's a lot harder to go the other direction, I don't know, okay. <laughs> node 2 is going to send a message back, right? They're going to say a message back, and they're going to say, they're going to say, no way, Jose, right? Like, goodbye, and hang up on you. <laughs> and that's the end of the conversation, right? That's the right, they can do that, they can just end the conversation. They don't have to talk to you if they don't want to. Um, but let's say that they're like, okay, sure, you're going to open a channel to me, right? So they're going to say, okay, fine. Um, here's pub key two, right? So that's how we send each other's pub keys back and forth. So you might be like, Lisa, what? Surely this is not what specs look like, right? Surely it's specs <laughs> looks a little different, right? Okay, but I have some news. It's like, no, it doesn't look much different at all. Let's go find it. Um, it's not it. It's, uh, I have it up here. So, oh, okay, so everyone, this is probably hard to read, let's make it a little bigger. That's not useful for anyone. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, actually, that's not fine, that's not bad. All right, so um, what is the specification? It's just literally writing out this, this stuff, like this, except in a little fancier, like, terminology, but essentially this is all that we write down in specs, right? Okay, so let's go look at these really fast. So, We'll make this a little more concrete than me just like having a conversation with myself on the internet. Uh, where's the code? New code. Uh, oh, so fun fact, this is in, so these are the specs. So Lightning has a written out paper where they write down where the specs are. This is like, I'm not managing to explain this. Okay, so what we're talking about is channel establishment, right? Building, opening a channel. Uh, this open channel message is this one here. Hey, I want to open a channel is also the formal, the official name is open channel. And then the formal name for this response is accept channel, right? Open channel, accept channel. So here they are. Okay, we can go look at them. What's inside the message that we're actually sending? Uh, there's a lot, okay, I lied. There's a lot more info in here than just the puppy. Um, <laughs> there's a little, there's a little, there's a few more things in here. So funding Satoshi is how much money you want to put in a channel. Push inside is how much money I'm just giving you because I decided I want you to have it. Um, it's a bribe, sort of. There's some other stuff in here to set this up. Fee rate is the, I don't know, I'm going to hand wave over that. Uh, here's the funding pub key. So this is like, um, this is going to be like basically inside here there's an object called, there's a piece of info called the funding <laughs> pub key, which I've been calling pub key one. Okay, cool. So there's a message so everyone can see how we like write out what the message is. And you just send it over the wire to your buddy node two, and node two is going to get it and be like, all right, now node two is going to have all this information, right? Okay. So the node two is like, all right, cool, that's nice, dude. And this is, we have descriptions of each of these things. Here, funding pub key is the pub key and the two of two multi sig script of the funding transaction output, right? So we kind of talked about that. All right, all right, everyone knows what that means now, right? Great. Okay, so I don't know why there's, there's a lot of instructions about how this works. So the spec writes out exactly how you should consider each of these things, etc., etc. Wow, it keeps going. Okay, where is the... Okay, alright, so then the other node sends back another message, the accept channel message, and part of this is their pub key, right? So it should be... No, it's still long. No, there's still a lot of stuff. But they also have a funding pub key. So they're going to also send back a funding pub key. Pub key, which is also known as pub key two, right? Okay. 
So now both parties, at the end of these two message exchanges, both parties are going to know what PubKey 1 and PubKey 2 are, right? Because Node 1 sent PubKey 1 to their friend Node 2, and Node 2 responded back with PubKey 2, right? So at this point, everyone has everything they need to build. Everything, everyone has everything they need to write, to fill in all the blanks in this one, right? If this is like a blank here, and this is a blank here. Does that make sense? Here's the blanks, now it's data. So we can, make, we can make a locking script for our Bitcoin, and we can send, we can send our Bitcoin to this output, and we will have a channel, right? Does everyone see how that works? Okay. So why do we have, let me go back up to the top of this page. Oh, we went too far. Why do we have all these other messages? We just sent everything we need for the address, right? I don't, maybe I'm going way more too into detail, that's fine. I'll just keep talking, it's cool. Okay. Um, right, so now we, have, now we have all the info we need to like open a channel, right? So you can send Bitcoin, so you have to like, say, let's say we have, I don't know, let's say we have an enormous amount of Bitcoin, let's say we have like five Bitcoin, and we're just gonna send it to this address, right? So we can turn this into a Bitcoin address, we can send some money to a BTC address, and then it's going to take, it takes two seconds. So, okay, so right now basically the way it works is node one is going to take this, this, this BTC address, and they're the only one. They're going to send money to this address by themselves. So they're just going to like, they're going to lock up their money into this address, right? So what is that? So node one is going to like make a little transaction, and they're going to send money to a Bitcoin address. And now, in order to move their five Bitcoin, they need a sign off from node two. So node two needs to sign to move the five Bitcoin, right? So what's like okay? So what are some downsides to doing this? Uh, when the channel opens, who has who has Bitcoin that they can spend in the channel? Node one. Only node one, right? Because node one sent money to that to that address, right? Um, node two knows the address, right? Node two could also just send money to the address, right? Right? I mean, let's be real, right? Everyone knows what the address is. What if we just all start sending money to the address, right? Oh, that seems that seems fine. So then we'll have like lots of UTXOs with money locked into it, right? We know what the address is. We can just send money there, like, right? Yeah. Okay. This is like problem though. Why is this a problem? Um, problem with this is that uh, the protocol only only makes it that you can like how do you say? It? Okay, so once you send money to the to the transactions though, uh, you need the other node's signature to spend it to get it out, right? Or get it out. So if you send money to this UTX, so you send money to this Bitcoin address, and you don't have the ability to, if you don't have the ability to spend it already and your peer disappears, you just lost five Bitcoin, right? Everyone follow me? So like, you send five Bitcoin to an address and someone else, some rando on the internet, you know, some other node, gave you a pub key that you locked up all your money to and you can't actually get your money back without their signature. Um, why would you do that? Would you do that? That doesn't seem like a good idea, right? Okay. So we need a little more in the protocol, the open channel protocol, right? We can't just stop after we've gotten the pub keys. We need a little more information before we send money to this address, right? Okay, so some downsides to this. Downsides and the new protocol isn't gonna fix all of these. Just spoiler alert. Um, uh, right, so the downsides are that like, okay, only one side can put money, can put money into a channel open. And uh, you really don't want to send money to the address, to the open address, until until you know you can get, you can rescue it, you can spend it, right? Does that make sense? So you send money to an address, but you want to make sure you can spend from that address before you send money there, because that would be a really bad idea not to do it. I've actually had some people that did that a few years ago for Lightning. We changed how the protocol works. We gave them more ability to use any wallet. They wanted to open a Lightning channel and they sent money to an address without getting uh, the ability to spend it first. And then it was their, their node, the other node went away and closed the channel and it was lost forever. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, great. So we have some other messages. So what's going to happen is node one. So let's go back up to here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to copy. I 
you know, okay, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy this down here. We're just gonna keep having the conversation going. We're gonna, hey guys, welcome. We're talking through how lightning works. Okay. Um, okay, so then the one after they've gotten the accept channel, they're gonna build the transaction, right? They're gonna like build a transaction uh, that sends money to that address, right? Because now they can make that address. So they're gonna build a transaction that sends money. And then they're gonna send over the wire to their, their buddy, right? They're gonna send over the wire, they're gonna send them the TX ID and the funding out point, basically, and the V out. We call this like the funding out point, I think. I don't know. Um, so that's gonna tell node two where to look for money on chain that'll be found the channel open, right? So they let let node two know. So they're gonna build so one side builds the transaction and then they send to node two the information about that. So uh, can I yeah, check this out. All it has in it, oh we also send the signature, that's fancy. Okay. So we send a um, we send the TXID and we send the output. That's literally all that's in this like message, right? Well, we're sending a TXID, we're sending a, an output number. So this these two pieces of information uniquely identify where you will be able to expect to see our Bitcoin on chain. Notice we haven't sent it yet. We just we're doing this all we haven't sent it, this is where we're planning on sending it, right? So this is some pre-planning on our part, is number one. And then we also send a signature that I don't want to explain right now. We send a signature, and let's just say that the signature lets Node 2 rescue their money if this transaction ends up on chain, if that makes sense. So this will let, so this is like, okay, I'm planning to send the money to this address. If I send, when I send the money to this address, you can use this signature from me, along with your own signature, to rescue the money, so to speak. So this is the node two now, if one and two signature, um, let's do to get money back, right? Basically. Um, so this lets node two get their money back if something goes wrong with the funding go quit, right? If I disappear, if I send all my money to it and then disappear forever, node two, in theory, could get, get they haven't put any money in, but they could get their non-money out anyways. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we do that. Okay, so node 2 gets it, and then what does node 2 send back? Node 2, node two is basically going to send back um, another message that's going to include their signature, right, basically, so that node 1 can then get their money out. And once node 1 has a signature from node 2, they're going to go ahead and send the transaction, right? But you're you're going to wait until you have the other party's permission to get your money out of that address before you send anything to the address, right? So you kind of have a, you have a get out of jail card just in case the peer goes away. Um, this is called the fun trivia fact. This is called the signature. This, this signature is for something called the commitment transaction. We're not going to cover that today. This is not a lightning class, though it might look like it. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so literally the, the next message that they sent back, this one here, I was right, I didn't even spend a long time to look for this. They sent back a funding sign message, and inside of it, what's inside of it is literally just a signature, right? You guys see this? It's a message called funding sign, and all that's in it is a signature. So that's it. That's like, that's the conversation, and then, I don't know what the last thing is. Yeah, that's basically it. That like, thing, these things like basically, this like ends here. Then you send the transaction, and then they're like, we wait. So then both sides like wait for the funding, for the channel to open, which means we're waiting for the transaction that has the the script that locks all the money up. But all the money is only node one's money, so we're waiting for the the output that has all of node one's money in it to get mined into a block, and then get buried to a certain depth. And at that point, we get okay, channel's open. And we send a message, the message that we send when that happens is called channel ready. And we both send channel ready, so when node 1 sees it get mined, it'll send a channel ready, well like mined a certain depth, I think 6 blocks. It'll send it, and then when this one sees it, or no, we can negotiate how many blocks. And then this guy will send a channel ready, so this will happen sometime, sometime later, right? That's not really that interesting. Okay. Do I have any questions so far? Great, okay, so we have two people who want to talk to each other about opening, you know, have a conversation about opening a channel. They have to exchange some pub keys, and then they have to exchange some signatures. And then 
once they get their signatures, one person who's built the transaction um, sends the transaction out to the, the blockchain, and as soon as it gets mined, that channel is considered like open and existing, right? Okay, so what were some downsides that we said about this? Does anyone remember what the downsides were? Drawbacks? All, all the money just out down from there. Yeah. All the money is on one side. Why is that a problem? Problem. Maybe like downside. Why is that not maybe suboptimal? There's no liquidity. There's no liquidity. So you can receive payments, but you can't send payments, right? So it makes everything. So it makes every channel that opens in Bitcoin and Lightning then can only send one way. Every time a new channel opens, you can only send one way. So if you wanted to be able to send money in the opposite direction, you would need to either make a payment or convince someone else to open a channel with you, towards you, right? So, um, and that costs more money because every time we want to open a channel now, we have to make an on-chain transaction and that has like a real world cost, right? Okay, so. Um, you can also push them, so you can also push the amount. Yes, the but then, there. yes, you can push it, but. Why are you pushing the money? Yeah, <laughs> But what if you don't know the other node you're opening it with, right? What if you want to open a channel because it's good for your node to be connected in the graph in that way, but you don't know that guy, right? You're not supposed to know who runs the nodes in theory, right? Like it's supposed to be hand wavy, like a semi-anonymous set of people with money in the channel, right? Or money. So okay, so it's like okay. What if you know some some very brilliant people in Lightning got together and decided that they would um, make a new protocol um, that would uh, so one of the goals of the new Sorry, protocol. I'm just I think there's a, at least a couple more disadvantages which will motivate what you're about to say, right? The, what? At least a couple more disadvantages. Oh, okay. List, right? I mean, first of all, the fact that the channel's not balanced because a, a lot of Lightning is based around the idea that there's a punishment risk, which is based around there being something to lose, so an unbalanced channel is a kind of a shitty thing. Yes. The, the second thing is, that I wanted to mention, is that, which is very relevant to what you're about to say, is if you, if you pay into a mining channel that says one UTXO, that somebody knows is yours, uh, and they know who owns the funds in the channel at that point. The privacy is quite poor, at least in the start, with a, with a single funding channel. Yep. Also, when it's multiple funding inputs, then you know common input on the common input. Not only the theory, but the whole kind of, the non common input. Common ownership risk, right? Because only one person opened it, right? So everyone, all those funds in that channel open belong to the same party, and it's one of the two in there. And yeah, you know. there's another one too, which is that then it's hard. It's also hard for new nodes to get in that quickly. Which is which just means so what this means in the real world? I mean, like practically, is that you can't receive payments. Receive payments over Lightning is hard. So if you wanted to like open a shop and send you, get people to buy cookies from you, it would be very difficult to get people to accept payments over Lightning because you need other people to open channels that you can receive money, right? Okay. Well, spend money to make money. <laughs> Earn, yeah, but then you have to like spend the same amount that you receive, but you have to pre-spend it, that seems... Yeah, it would be a one-to-one -one ratio of that, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just have to be profitable. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I don't, yeah, I don't know what economic model that is. So it's definitely not capitalism. Um, okay. Um, all right. So we're going to make a new protocol. And one of the goals, well, there's two goals, sort of. I mean, the real motivating factor is that we want to make it easier to get inbound, really, to get inbound. So this is like kind of one of the big goals. Um, but in order to do that, we said, okay, what if we let everyone, what do you call it? What if we let both sides, what if we let both sides, like, Construct the channel. What if we like built the channel together, right? I mean, built the transaction together, right? So we gave like basically. What if we make a protocol? Let's make a protocol um, where everyone can put money into the channel, money into the channel at open, right? And so what that means, like, so we want to be able to build a, a, a transaction that has UTXOs from two parties, right? So people of two parties can make one transaction uh, with UTXOs from both people, right? Does that make sense, everyone? So remember how a transaction is like a, so remember how a transaction is, maybe I can wrap this up in like five minutes. Um, so remember how a transaction is like literally, uh, not XYZ, it's like a list of inputs, 
and then a list of outputs, right? So what if we had a way that the two people could talk and they'd say, okay, I'm going to put input from node 1, and then we could have an input from, from node 2, right? And then we could have, basically in our outputs, we could have the channel funding, right? The channel funding output, which is the 2 of 2 multi-seg that we talked about, right? And then we can have the out, we can have the exchange output for node one, and then a change output for node two. Outputs, outputs. Great. Does that make sense? So okay. So what if we could together make a transaction that looks like this? So now two different people have inputs in the transaction. And there's a bunch of different places that the money's going. Because we've got this like weird funding output. This is like shared funds that both parties own, right? Um, it's kind of hard to tell if like I put in like, I don't know, one Bitcoin and they put in like, I don't know, uh, I need like big numbers, like 10 Bitcoin and this person puts in like five Bitcoin, right? And then let's say that like into the funding output, node one wanted to put like three Bitcoin into this, right? So node one's gonna put three Bitcoin in, and node two is gonna put in, let's say they're gonna put in two Bitcoin, right? So then node one is gonna have how much change? Node one put in 10, and they put three, so they're gonna get seven Bitcoin back. Oh, okay, wait, I'm gonna make this a little bit better so I can, let's say they put six in. So how many would they get four back, right? And then this one would get like, how many, three back? Um, it's kind of hard to tell, I think, maybe I'm making this up, but I think it would be difficult to tell whose money went where, right? Because it's plausible, because this is going to be, so this is all... There's some subsets, some, like in a typical coin join, you can, you can find subsets of even channels that match, and this is not possible to do that, because there's payments in, in, embedded inside that obviously that I've never seen. Right. The sequence of the P-join, right? No, it's better. Uh, well, the page only got multiple possible solutions, but this you just literally can't find a solution. Uh, I see. Yeah. Is is the reason why you have the change out just so that people analyzing the transaction can't tell which money goes into the channel? You don't have to. You could, but it's optional. Okay, because yeah, because it seems like you could just have the inputs be the size of the channel, and then the change doesn't even participate in this transaction. Yeah, you could have that. Okay. It depends. There's options. Maybe you don't want to put all your 10 Bitcoin in a channel with no two. Maybe you just don't like them that much. Maybe it's not a good place for you to put your stuff. I don't know. It could also be that just node one puts all of his money into the channel and only node two gets a change. But then you don't know who's changing it. Exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, so there's some cool stuff about this, right? And the reason that you get that is because this is like a joint account you've created. And so it becomes harder to tell where the Bitcoin went because some of it went into a joint account and you don't know who has how much at the start, right? So, okay, so there's a couple cool things you can notice here, right? One is both nodes will have money in the channel. It's not an even amount. They can kind of decide how much money they want to put in. But it makes it possible that both can both send and receive immediately through this channel, right? How much is, like, different, but it makes it such that you can send and receive payments all, all at once. It's only one transaction, and you get, you get like a little bit of savings in the fact that it's only one. Well, yeah, you get some savings by having one channel deployed, right? Okay. So in order to make this happen, what are we going to have to change? So this is our goal, right? This is what, so like right when you're designing a protocol, the first thing that you figure out is what you want to be able, what information do we need to share? What information do we need to have a conversation about so that we can achieve our goal? Our goal is to build a transaction together, right? So this is what we want. We want to be able to have a transaction. So both sides are going to need more or less to know all the information. That's not strictly true, but we like doing things balanced for reasons and decentralized protocols. So we could send all the information to one node, right? We could have just one node send all of their input information to the other node, have them like blindly construct, have them construct a transaction, and then just send the tra which transaction I need back to the other node, right? But we don't want to do that. We want both sides to be able to build the transaction. Reasons. Not thinking about it, like I don't know why I did that, but we did. Um, okay. So what are we gonna do? We need to we need to send information about the transaction over the wire now, back and forth, right? Back and forth over the wire. Um, right. Okay. So uh, we need a new protocol for that. We need a new protocol. Protocol. One way of thinking of protocol is just like can conversation, right? Like what what am I allowed to say? Back and forth. Um, kind of like writing a script in a play, 
for two actors that are very dry robots. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so we need a protocol. And so what we came up with has been calling the Interactive Transaction Construction Protocol. Is that only for funding? Um, the goal is that, so we're reusing this for splicing. So this is for, we're going to reuse the same protocol for splicing because splicing does the same work of making a new transaction with two parties. So it's the same work that's happening. It just happens at a different, there's a different setup and a different ending, but the middle part of when you're building the transaction is the same. And then could it be used for non-lightning stuff? Sure, actually the DLC people. Yeah. <laughs> um, the DLC people, <laughs> Carmen is not here anymore, he was working on the protocol. They took the protocol that we wrote, changed it, because we wrote it in a way, we wrote it in a way that it's quite flexible in terms of, it lets you, yeah, how much do I want to talk about this? All right, I'll say it. Um, the, it, lets, it makes it such that you can, the way that we constructed the transaction, makes it such that you can um, build a transaction with parties that aren't just the two that are having the conversation. So there's some plausible deniability about who the inputs you're sending to your peer belong to. Whereas if you do it in a batch transaction way, you can't lose that capability. Um, whether or not this is something we should preserve and lightning is maybe a, is a question, but you can do cool stuff with it. It lets you basically do, it basically lets you build, open, start multiple channel opens at the same time and build one transaction that opens multiple four or five, six channels in the same transaction. So you basically get like a decentralized multi-party transaction that anyone who runs lightning node can kick off anytime they want. Right. Okay. Anyways, uh, all right. That's what I was going to say. Trying to preserve the idea that not everyone needs to know about all the other channels, why it's different. So you might not know about other ones that happen. No. Yeah. 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 It just looks like outputs for the other nodes, so it like doesn't. And you can do this. So fun fact, you can do this on Core Lightning already. It's already implemented. It's, it exists. Everything I'm talking about today exists on Core Lightning, and you can, you can, you can. Maybe I should. Should try doing an open fun channel, multi fun channel? Oh, we can do that. That would be fun. Okay. How much time do I have? All right. I'm really over time, so I'm going to talk in another like five minutes and then. Okay. So let's just go like for giggles, maybe like browse through what's kind of changed about it. It's in pull requests. It's a proposal. Um, Core Lightning is implemented. It. That's my pro the project I work on. Uh, Eclair, which is a French team that does Lightning, is also implemented it. So we're in the sort of final stages when I'm not working on conferences, um, of getting it uh, running, of getting it um, basically, what do you call it, ratified so it would be considered part of the spec. But uh, let's be two. That. This one. So this is a pull request. It's a proposal. Wow, only 325 <laughs> comments. <laughs> like, uh, I'll point out the, this, this is, you know, we've been working on this for a while. Um, um, great, okay, so let's just go look at the file changes, so, yeah, okay. Oh, I, I made a whole video where I explain it, too, so if you want to walk me, walk through another video where I explain how it works, there's, that exists in the pull request. Um, there you go, fine. Is there a way to, like, mm, okay. Maybe I should pull out the, mm, I don't have it on this computer, that's okay. Commits. File changes. This one. Oh look, this is like, this is most of it. Um, do, 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 do. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, how did I, let me make it small for a second so I can see what's going on. Oh, large diff, okay. I feel like there's a way to just look at the branch. Let's just go to that, it's a lot easier. Okay. And this branch, yeah, let's just go to the branch and look at it there. Let's go go gadget, branch, viewer. Um, okay, so basically in here, We've changed it, we've added stuff, so where? Okay, so it used to be, so this is, we've now changed channel establishment from the last time. We've now given it this nice little name V1, right? So that was version one. And we've added a whole new thing of V2. So now we still have an open message and accept message. Then we have this whole section of new stuff called the interactive transaction construction. 
like quite the mouthful. Okay. Um, and then you kind of have some more stuff where you like finish it off. And then we also have this like cool ability to do RDF now. So if you attempt to open a channel and then you want to renegotiate it, you have we give you a protocol to be able to attempt to RDF a trick open, which we don't have currently. With the collaboration of both funders. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. There's, there's no guarantee that this will work. Yeah, but it's, yeah. But it's it, yeah, which is kind of cool. Um, great, okay, so I guess we can walk through. Wait, maybe there's, do I have, oh, I have diagrams, check it out. Okay, cool. Um, cool, so this is like kind of how I was like, kind of how we were walking through how it works here with these little arrows back and forth. Um, we have some diagrams in the spec that also do this, so, Node one is going to send a message to node two. It's quite. There's a lot here. All right. This is. You'll notice it's a lot shadier than the first version. There's a lot more information we kind of have to send back and forth. Um, great. So. Can we make it a bit bigger. Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> that was. I regret that. Where did it? <laughs> <laughs> great. Is that better? Can you guys see that? Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, so we still have, like, node 1 is going to send a message, it's going to pick, so before all of this there's a process of like picking a node that you want to open a channel with, right? So that's like a whole separate thing. You have to decide who you want to open a channel with, right? And liquidity ads kind of is supposed to help with some of this, like who am I opening a channel with question. It's, uh, it helps answer the question, where, who can I open a channel with and expect them to put money in, whatever, but hand wave over that. So that's like the coordination of how you you coordinate that someone's going to put money in the channel with you as liquidity ads. Yeah, that's a whole other proposal, also implemented in Core Lightning, which is fun. Okay, cool. Anyways, okay. So first note is going to be like, okay, you, I'm going to open a channel with you. I'm going to send you an open channel message. Like, yo, I want to open a channel that's going to have a whole bunch of information in it about my pub key and all that other stuff we already saw. And then the other side is going to be like, okay, yeah, I will, I will, this seems reasonable. I will open a channel with you. And so they'll say, okay, yes, I accept your proposal to open a channel, right? Then we get into a section that I call transaction collaboration, which is we start sending each other the inputs and outputs that, oh gosh, we're going to just go to the top. So then we start doing this thing, is there, here. Then we start sending each other a bunch of messages where we communicate, hey, this is an input that I want to add to a, to a channel. Here's another input, here's an output, and so you just send each other back and forth all the inputs and outputs that you expect on this transaction, right? So one by one, each of you takes a turn. If you don't have anything to add, you just say no, pass. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, in card games, so you're like going around and you're like, okay, no, no, I have nothing this time, pass. And so the other person plays another card, and then you say, no, no, I have nothing this time. So you say, T is complete, like, I don't have anything. And they're like, well, here's another input. And they're like, no, I don't have anything. Like, okay, well, here's an output. And then as soon as you get two people in the card round, basically, to say, both say pass, then it ends. So you're kind of, like, dealing cards back and forth between each other, um, going around back and forth. And then at the end, after both say pass two in a row, you're like, okay. Let's look at all the cards that you will put on the table, right? And we're both going to have the same set of inputs and outputs, and we're going to take all this information that we've sent each other, and we're going to build a transaction with like basically the set of cards that everyone's kind of put in the middle. Does that make sense? And the cards are sort of your inputs and outputs, right? So Each sort of, input gets registered separately? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Non-batched. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that you can get inputs from a third party. Uh -huh. And so you can be talking to someone else about this. So as you get inputs from a third party, you can send them to another one. So you get like kind of a ladder effect. But then it looks like it's from. And there's no, uh, there's no ownership proof for those inputs. No, it's very basic. Uh -huh. So it's it's a little griefable, right? Yeah. This is a very basic. Let's get the protocol working. Yeah, but if you want third party inputs, then ownership groups are, well, more difficult. Mm -hmm. But still do mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's possible that someone can send you complete junk and you build a transaction that they can't send you valid signatures for. In that case, well, you, haven't, you just lost some time. Yeah. You haven't really lost any money. And as long as you don't actually reserve any of those inputs until they get spent, it yeah. just it doesn't. The attacker might at that point learn your inputs. Right, so this is an interesting aspect of it being a lightning open, and that's that 
all lightning opens become public information at some point, right? They're going to know your inputs. Yeah, it's a little bit of an information link, yeah. So like PageOne has a similar issue, right? That yes. The sender can query the new pixels of yes. version. It's a common problem with yeah. interactive transaction yeah. construction things, yeah. And so PageOne solves it by signing a, a, tra a single user transaction with that input already that the merchant could broadcast. Yes. Yeah. so we have a proposal of how we there's a proposal for not that, but anyways, yeah, there's proposals on how to fix it for like people who haven't. No. But the currently there's just this regard. Yeah. Yeah. So you you there's a possibility that you can make UTXO information, that's true. Yeah. 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 But there's a little bit of a thought in Lightning that your UTXOs aren't as important in Lightning as they are in I mean they are important in terms of like how much money you have the ability to spend. But they don't represent payments. They represent the ability to make batches of payments. So there's less of a relationship between your UTXOs and the amount of payments you actually that represents, if that makes sense. But you, you're, you're assuming you're talking about UTXOs that actually do end up the channel. Because this, this could That's fail true. and then you yeah. That's true. We will get it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Yes, there are some definite downsides to this okay. and, and well. Even the griefing isn't that bad because there could be a third party input that you included. Yes. So there's no way of, there's yeah. plausible deniability that it's not your UTXO. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, and that's why it's not bashed, uh -huh. is that we preserve the plausible deniability that they're not your UTXOs. They could be someone else's. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, so this is, this is like, the, the spec just kind of has some like, um, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Yeah, okay. And then this defines how to add it, what information you need to send about an input, or what information you need to send about an output. And we also have the ability to remove inputs and outputs, which is like, you know, pretty fancy, so you could add stuff and then remove it later. So if you had a third party that was in the negotiation and then dropped out, you could remove them. I don't think we actually use this in our thing. We just failed it. It's fine. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's like the back and forth stuff. So this is like the biggest changes. Okay, I think I'm way over time. I'm gonna stop talking now. But so this is like basically the big change, right, between V1 and V2, right? Um, and so then now you also need to send, you need to send also at the end, so after you constructed the transaction, so you construct the transaction, right, together, and then you exchange um, signatures that let you spend from that transaction, spend from that transaction, right? So this means that it's the same problem as before. You don't want to publish the transaction before you have signatures, so you get the signatures to do it. And then the last thing you do is you exchange signatures to broadcast the value that spend the funding transaction, basically. So there's kind of like a couple more steps here. It's a lot more complicated than the original one. There's a lot more messages and talking that has to happen. Um, but yeah, the setup is a little more whatever, but um, there's some cool properties that you get from that. Ability to keep talking. Okay, great. Do you want to know more about the proposal? The whole thing is up on the internet at uh, um, this PR thing. I don't know where it was. I'm going to keep looking back. What PR number was it? 851. Yeah, so PR 851 on the Lightning Bolts repo. If you'd like to chime in, um, you know, 325 is not the record yet. We could, um, you know, make it a little bit, yeah. Rookie numbers, we have not hit four digits yet. Yeah, um, great. Anyways, cool. And then if you want to learn more about how to make this work on correlating, um, I feel like the fun one is multi-fun channel with like liquidity app vibes, but I don't, I need to make a tutorial on how that works because that's fun. Um, that doesn't exist. Anyways, look up multi-fun channel. You go to docs and uh, it, Yeah, oh, let me find the... Multi-fund channel. <laughs> yeah, if you stop here, it's like multi-fund. Yeah, command for establishing multiple lightning channels. Um, and if you make it such that you um, you do the request amount, basically, so there's a few little parameters in here you can add to each of them to buy liquidity ads, that'll basically, the liquidity ad is how you do the coordination to convince your peer to put money in the channel. Um, and the way you convince them is you bribe them, you give them money, you're like, hey, I would like you to put money in the channel with me, I'll pay you for it. Um, the liquidity ad is a coordination mechanism for doing that, and so you get multi-fund channel with a bunch of channels that you buy liquidity from at the same time. And so that is how you would get 
a decentralized, coordinated, self-coordinated coin join. Basically. Cool. Okay, great. I'm way over time. Thank you, everyone. Um, <laughs>